Welcome to this Let's Play video where I'm going to check out a new title called Cold Waters. Cold Waters is a, oh, what should we say, a, a Cold War submarine tactical game, I guess. I'm a little hesitant to call it a simulator because it's not high fidelity in the sense of uh, some of the other simulators that you get out there, like the Silent Hunter series or uh, back in the days of uh, Dangerous Waters, or um, uh, Jane's um, series, or anything like that. But it does capture the feel of submarine warfare in the Cold War. And if you've ever watched The Hunt for Red October, and thought, man, that was really cool, you'll probably really enjoy this game. So I'm just going to look at a couple options in the game here. There is a whole bunch of training missions that you can do to teach you the basics of maneuvering your ship and firing weapons and it is quite simple once you get the hang of it there is a bunch of single missions that you can do increasing in difficulty and it also has a campaign which i will be giving a go so we're going to try the 1984 campaign and in the campaign you can choose from a number of submarines. Now, the game's only been out a day, and already just thought I'd mention that people have gone and um, modded the game to unlock Russian submarines in the single mission play. So you can actually play against the Russians in a Russian typhoon, which is quite cool. So I'm sure we'll see lots more mods and add-ons coming soon for the game. So we've got like the Skipjack class, the Permit class, the Sturgeon class, the Narwhal class, and finally the Los Angeles class. And I'm going to go to the Los Angeles just because, well, it is the best. So in the campaign, they have this um, cool story that plays along that tells you about current events. And if you pass missions, you'll find that the NATO allies do better in the current events as the war swings in your favor. But if you fail in missions, then you'll find that, uh, or you fail to complete missions, you'll find that the current events swing the other way and the war does not go very well for you um, until you eventually reach the end of the war, assuming that you're able to survive that long. So you start off in a base and you're given a objective, a, a mission. So we're docked at Holy Lock. We find that there is a small force with some tankers and tenders sailing from Murmansk. And it is for a rendezvous near the Greenland Sea. And you're ordered to find and sink this group before it completes replenishment of enemy forces. There could be enemy submarines tenders and tankers of the mission target. Okay, so somewhere between Murmansk and the Greenland Sea is where we want to go. So if we cast off, we could look at rearming and repairing, but everything you change will take time. Um, so if we cast off and we can drag and click. We find where Murmansk is, it's over here, and they're heading up to the Greenland Sea. So we head up towards, and you can see the SOSIS uh, sonar lines. So somewhere, oh, right, there we go, there is a fleet of ships. That is possibly our target. And the game stops when it goes into uh, a contact. So we can choose to try and close in depth, uh, in, in range, but there is a risk that you will be discovered. Um, you can check out your status of your ship, what you have loaded in different tubes, what your damage of your ship is at the time, and you can go back and review your orders. So we're just going to jump straight into this battle. So apparently we've got a contact bearing 121. Here is our Los Angeles class submarine. 
and I can bring up a map here you can see we're heading current bearing of course 259 now you steer the sub using the um, A and D keys to left and right rudder um, which is a little unusual because normally in submarine games you set a course whereas this one you just set the heading and you can set dive planes using W and S again you don't set the depth you set the, the angle of the planes and that determines um, how your ship turns and then you can just push X to go straight and level at your current depth and course um, be nice maybe if they could introduce the um, ability to, to pre like lock in a course and have the AI do it for you it feels a little bit weird sort of steering your submarine like you'd fly an airplane so currently you're doing 26 knots um, we'll drop that down you can drop it down in thirds there's no sort of fine control like you know, setting course for 20 knots or anything like that one thing that is quite cool is you can control your buoyancy as well that's your balance tanks there so you can actually uh, go up and down without having to use the planes. I'm just going to fast forward the game a little bit. Bring us up to periscope depth. And we can see 82 feet there is sort of a, a weak thermal layer there. Still got no contact showing, so I'm not sure where this contact is. Put a touch more rudder in there to keep us turning, looping around. The ship we have an active sonar, passive sonar, and towed array. Gonna level out now before we surface. And I can raise the periscope. Ooh. A little bit rough there reach the surface slightly and we can go into periscope view we can do a quick scan there's uh, night vision as well we can turn on you can also drag with the mouse if you prefer not to use the arrow keys You can zoom in with the mouse wheel. So we've got a bearing one, two, two. There we go. What's this? We use I we can lock it in so if you are using your periscope you can straight away get a classification on what it is cravat class let just get that up so I can show you We've got some other contacts showing up here too. E2, and we have active sonar coming as well. So E2. Ah, while we stop turning around, I'm going to come around to the right so that we can head towards these targets. Hearing 100. There we go. 
a bit far away for me to designate at this point. depth down just a little bit because I don't want to flip the surface and be detected by their radar. There's another Kravak. Right. Okay, so now that I know they're both hostile. What I can do is I can look at releasing some weapons. And I can set a course towards it. Right click, and there is a torpedo away. What I might do actually is change this one to get to that one and set a new one set to this one. Now these torpedoes are wire guided which means that I can actually change their course while they are connected to the ship. Um, Oops, I've had a wire break on one of them. I need to be careful that that torpedo doesn't come back at me. So what I'll probably do now is I'm going to go deep. broken the other wire as well. So I'll let those two fish run and see what happens. I'm going to go a bit down a bit. to a stop, see if I can pick up those cruisers. There you go, one torpedo obviously hit. And we have a Sona boy in the water. Got something pinging here. Yeah. There was a very faint contact on the Quebec one. You can go through your uh, view. 
go through your sensor um, profiles there. Now they're a bit far away. Speed up a little bit and see whether go here. Is there another sonar board? Nothing. Probably not a torpedo. I think I need to come up and have another look. A new bit contact bearing zero uh, contact zero three. What could that be? Right, 65 feet, so coming up the periscope to get the short thing. Got to get under 50 periscope. And this one, zero 03, is at bearing 91091. 91. That could be our ship that we're after. And it's around. Back, you can see then the target solution of a map updating with the latest information. The range 11,000 yards. Now, I'm going to use one of my alternate weapons here and try and fire a missile at them. So I just need to turn as much and I can allocate this weapon it has a minimum range of 8,000 yards away it goes and straight away I'm going to go deep I do not want anybody after me for that. And apparently 
apparently we sunk it. So the only other contact I've got is the Quebec. There. Maker there trying to flip between us and the torpedo. Form knuckles. You swish the water up behind you. Creating a disturbance that sort of acts like a, a baffle. finally reaching the end of its run. It's charges. somewhere up there still rather annoyed that we've taken out his friends try and quietly see if we can pick him up there's the ship that we out before.
here is back to back. Only gonna come with the full right rudder, and we can launch this tube. Steer the torpedo. That's the wire guided. There we go. And now, no vessels, weapons, aircraft, or flooding. Leave the contact. Leave the combat. There we go. So we did accomplish our mission. That was the mission we had to accomplish. One of the things I found the map is a little bit uh, vague on is you, you sort of have to read between the lines a bit as to where you need to go. And there you go. Several NATO groups, have, naval groups, have recently been operating unopposed. So the ability to operate around the Greenland Sea has been dramatically diminished for reasons that remain classified. Alright, so enemy cruise missile submarines are trying to transit the um, Greenland Iceland United Kingdom gap and return to port for repairs and rearming. So we're trying to sink these submarines. We can see what have we got? We got eighteen Mark forty eight, so that should be enough. We reload these since we know we're going to be firing at submarines, hopefully. And then we can check out what's going on over here. Let's check the conditions. There's a layer at 217 feet, so it could be something above that or underneath that. Up to the surface and make sure it's not a surface contact. Okay, so we've got a Sierra 01 that is cavitating, so it's probably an underwater contact. And it's going with active sonar as well. Victor one. Okay, we're going to snapshot a weapon off at it. Cavitating. Yeah, the torpedo got him in the end. There he is. So it wasn't what we were after in terms of a guided missile submarine.
to the lair and see what it is. Anything else? up anything yeah. so I haven't seen or heard anything of this Submarine fleet. New contact. We reload this tube. No thermoclines for us to hide behind. Speed down and see what we can hear. There we go, it's zero one. Made a missile destroyer. Use one of our harpoon missiles on that. This we will come all the way up to. Periscope here. Good look. Right. No. Right, we now have a solution. You can tell because we have the trail coming out the back of the target and also the aiming reticule as well. So we're not too under feet to fire. And bearing one one seven. She is. Here's our missile. Hmm. 
Okay, we'll do it the old fashioned way. Chopper launching. Hostile torpedo in the water. Looks like they fell a bit short though. Lower the periscope in time. There you go. And that's crack one Udaloy. Oh, we have a target E2 over here as well. I'm not sure what that is, but we want to get away from these torpedoes first. Ooh, way too deep. Swing back around and we'll see if we can find out what that E2 contact is. Check. Nothing nearby, but we'll check it out. Going to about force 180 or 160 maybe. Of a Sierra three. Oop. Don't mean to do that. Mm -hmm. 
here though. November is this in maybe? See anything there? Any hard left and see if we can get any more information on this track. We got thirty six percent shooting solution at the moment. this thing over here this will be one of them This is a November class that's getting awfully close. Firing. Yes. It is acquired. I have a hard time outrunning this one. She's a bit of an old girl. make there. And so there's this contact master too. Oh, something's pinging us. around again see if we can close on this and get a bit more information I 
Let's get in this fiction for a little while. The only thing it really can be. Right. Yes. Torpedo is active, it's locked. Lost the wire, it was locked in. I can actually see it going through it here. I wish it can come back at us.
crush it here. Alright, so. Oh, we have flooding. We have flooding. Oh. Once he took some damage from that. Uh, Anti um, from the barrage of depth charges that they fired. Unbalanced it up. Right. Emergency blow. Red October, come on, Big D, fly. Radar and ESM. No other contacts, it seems. So, uh, in general, it's a fun game. It is very immersive. It certainly has its moments of tension. The game is a little limiting in the sense that you only have the sort of basic systems. You can't sort of multi-track targets at one time. Um, there are a range of armaments available, but... Um, you know, with the older submarines, you get a slightly older loadout torpedoes. Um, there's only a small sort of, I guess, selection of units in the game at the moment, in terms of the American subs and a few Russian warships and the Russian subs. Um, really hope that'll get fleshed out more, and I think with the modding, people will definitely be building on that in the very near future. Um, would I recommend it? Yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, and with some more content hopefully coming in the future, I think it'll continue to be a really good game. Um, so if you're the type of person who likes Sims or Simish games without getting them being too complicated and having to study a manual for hours, um, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Thanks for watching guys, make sure you subscribe for some more adventures.